Weinstein, Walter P. Stern, Distinguished Fellow at Hudson Institute. I am absolutely delighted to welcome you to today's event, the transformation of Japan's security strategy, featuring State Minister for Defense Yasuhida Nakayama. The declaration by Japanese Defense Minister Nobu Kishi that Japan would not set defense expenditures to 1% of GDP, but would instead peg spending to security threats marks the latest development in the evolution of Japanese strategic thinking. Minister Kishi's announcement followed nine years of increased defense spending in response to China's military modernization, its increasingly aggressive assertion of territorial claims in the East and South China Seas, as well as regular Chinese and Russians incursions into Japanese airspace, and of course, the continued threat posed by North Korea's nuclear missile program. What does this transformation signal for the future of Japanese security strategy? We're very fortunate to have State Minister of Defense Nakayama, the number two in Japan's defense ministry, an outspoken friend of the United States and a well-known and forthright voice for Japanese national security in his own right with us today. Nakayama Sensei, a native of Osaka, was first elected to Japan's diet in 2003. He has served in numerous critical foreign and defense policy roles, including as Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs, Director of the Liberal Democratic Party's National Defense Division, as Senior Director of the Special Committee on North Korea Abductions, and as State Minister for Foreign Affairs before becoming State Minister for Defense in 2020. I should note that this is not his first Hudson Institute appearance. He was a member <laughs> of the National Visitors Program as a much younger man, and had the uh, and specifically asked to visit Hudson Institute, then headquartered in Indianapolis, where he spent time uh, with our research team um, to discuss uh, national security issues. Uh, State Minister Nakayama will offer opening remarks, and I will have the opportunity to pose questions to him afterwards. Mr. State Minister, welcome back to Hudson Institute. Thank you so much. Good morning from Tokyo, Japan. And uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, ex explaining uh, my biography. And uh, I'm really glad that, uh, 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 can I call you Ken? <laughs> because it's a very familiar name in Japanese. It's actually the Japanese name, Ken. So uh, uh, I'm really uh, delightful and uh, very glad that uh, uh, the Hudson Institute uh, invite me to this conference. And uh, it is very uh, great honor for me to join Hudson Institute uh, because uh, Ken already told about my uh, story. Uh, when I was 20s, um, I was invited as a uh, international visitors program uh, from the uh, United States government, Department of the States program. And uh, I requested to visit Hudson Institute um, because uh, when I was uh, that age, uh, I was always watching Hidaka's report in Japan. And uh, I was really interested in uh, his report and I searched his uh, bio and uh, he is uh, uh, the team of the Hudson Institute. So I request DOS to introduce me to the Hudson Institute uh, headquarters. And uh, I thought Hudson Institute is in Washington, DC, but actually it doesn't. <laughs> the head office is in uh, uh, Indiana Police. So I went there and I really enjoyed staying in Hudson Institute. And I met with uh, uh, President London at that time. I, I was really surprised uh, that London is in Indiana Police. So anyway, and... Um, Anyway, so now I'm uh, getting, uh, you know, getting older. Uh, I, was I was born in 1970, so this year I will go into 51. And now I'm in politics in Japan and uh, I'm sitting here in the Ministry of Defense. And uh, so today it's a very great day uh, that uh, I have to thank to the Harrison Institute and I have to share our knowledge and also a small experience of myself. And uh, I, I, again, I'm really glad and very, very honorable uh, to sitting here with 
ハルソンインスティテュートイベント。So thank you very much again. ありがとうございます。So、uh, first I'd like to、uh, talk about、uh, what is happening、uh, around Japan. And、uh, also I, I can say that the,、uh, the what's happening and、uh, the situation has been changed is not concern or the problem or issue、uh, that the Japan only have. Uh, the issue that I'm, I'm going to tell you is、uh, also the, it's a, I think it's a very big matter、uh, of the,、uh, not just the United States of America, but also the Europe or、uh, allies in the, in the world. So, first, I'd like to、uh, show you uh, this uh, map. So, this map. Shows you the range of、uh, JL 2 missiles and also JL 3 missiles. It's a missile range,、uh, easy to understand. So, this is Japan, my country. This is、uh, North America, Canada, and the United States, Washington, DC. And、uh, so, you can see the red submarine here. This is what we call South China Sea. So, The, the Chinese、um, naval activities is uh, actually, uh, they are getting more power. And also, the,、uh, they, are, they, are, they are investing、uh, the lots of budget,、uh, focusing on especially the, to the、uh, maritime businesses. And that means submarines. And it, of course, it's a nuclear submarines. And they used to have JL 2 missiles, which is a range about 8,000 kilometers. And so, if the Chinese submarine launched missile from JL 2、uh, for this direction, which means your house direction, maybe Honolulu is in the range. And sometimes Alaska, sometimes West Coast. It can reach s to, to your place.、Uh, it's a possibility.、Uh, but actually, 2020, last year, which、uh, we, we tried to have in a、uh, Olympic and Paralympics in Tokyo, but unfortunately, the, the virus、uh, came out from the、uh, Wuhan, China, and expanded and uh, uh, took lots of lives from the world, all over the world. And、uh, I send、uh, condolences to the Uh, who lost their lives uh, by the, uh, uh, this uh, tragedy and disaster of the pandemic. So, anyway, 2020, the Chinese PLA planned it to、uh, create the new missiles, updating missiles called JL 3 missiles. So, what about the JL 3 missiles? JL 2 range, it's about the Honolulu, the, about that, which I told you already. But JL 3, It's getting、uh, more range they can get. So, even the East Coast, the White House in Washington, D.C., is it's, it's already in the aiming of the target range of the JL 3 missiles. So, if the Chinese submarine、uh, d i v e into the water of the South China Sea area, and if they use Uh, these missiles towards the United States means they are already、uh, possible to aim the East Coast and the White House. So I think、uh, those kinds of situations、uh, is a fact why the United States,、uh, the former president, uh, 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 Donald Trump, is. Uh, so strongly、uh, feel like upset.、Uh, and also, he h a have to he h a v e to tough negotiation、uh, between the Chinese Xi Jinping. Uh, I think uh, uh, it, it looks like、uh, only a tech issue, you know, the 5G issue. But、uh, also, 5G means uh, uh, future uh, techniques. Like、uh, on the internet or the AI 
uh, if you talk about AI with China, there's a two meanings of the AI. One is an artificial island in the South China Sea. The other AI is the artificial intelligence, which um, we need a moral uh, when we create the, those technology. So I think the former administ administration is also uh, uh, considered about the, uh, what the China's next movement or step uh, for a uh, step towards the world. And, and now the president, uh, president Joe Biden administration actually uh, he, he against uh, with uh, uh, Donald Trump strongly during the campaign or even after the campaign. But uh, the, honestly speaking, I think, uh, I think the, the foreign policy of the United States government is getting more stronger uh, compared to Donald Trump uh, foreign policy. And actually Joe Biden's um, administration updating the, the base of the uh, Donald Trump foreign policy, especially towards China and also the Asia uh, region. And also the, uh, uh, when our uh, former administration Shinzo Abe former prime minister uh, present to the uh, all over the world leaders about the FOIP, which is a free open in the Pacific concept. Um, and uh, Donald Trump, uh, the former president uh, strongly uh, follow and uh, catch up about uh, the Shinzo Abe's policy, which is a FOIP. And uh, even the uh, present administration Joe Biden's administration also following this concept. So as a Japanese politician, I would like to, to say thank you very much, the United States and uh, uh, US and Japan's uh, strong strengthening uh, to the uh, foreign policy issues, especially against this kind of uh, threat and concern uh, for the both country and also the entire world. Uh, have to be think together and uh, we have to solve those issues together and uh, not just the Japan or US, but if you look at the North, North side, you can see not the United States, Canada, but also the EU countries, all the European countries, including the aim and the range of the new missile from the Chinese PLA threat. So, uh, and also the, there is another movement uh, on the issue of the earth, uh, which means um, we can, uh, if you look the Chinese activities around Japanese soil or the uh, access uh, water or the air defense when you're focusing on, you can see the uh, China and Russia collaborating uh, together uh, when they doing some uh, military exercise around uh, our neighbors. And uh, actually right now, uh, the, the Russians uh, military uh, activity in the Northern territory of Japan, uh, actually they are doing, uh, using the troops more than uh, 10,000 troops in the Northern territory uh, of Japan. And uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, activity or the military exercise is really uh, pressure to the Japanese citizens so that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of, of Japan, uh, yesterday uh, we claim to the, uh, the Russian uh, ambassador uh, and also the Russian embassy. And so, uh, and also the, the bombers uh, fly, flew over uh, our uh, sky uh, nearby and uh, they flew over uh, and across our territorial uh, sky, uh, they crossed the border of our sky. So uh, last year, and so those kind of uh, activities uh, between the Russians and also the Chinese uh, military exercises, uh, they are increasing the the uh, the situation and the numbers. Uh, so that is uh, uh, our concern and our. Uh, surrounded the situation right now. And then those Russia, uh, the former Soviet Union threat or the, the 
what we call the Cold War during the 20th century. Uh, in this 21st century, still continuously doing the same kind of, uh, uh, how do you call it, or the, the situation or the, uh, the balance is still uh, continuously uh, in this 21st century also. And, and also we have another concern uh, uh, if you look up on the, uh, the sky, uh, which means space, outer space. And you can see next slide. This slide shows you the, uh, the satellite activities uh, from the, uh, the China. And so the Chinese uh, space agency launched um, the lots of satellites more than the United States in, in the future. And uh, so the space uh, you know, field, uh, the warfare is also uh, escalating, I guess. And uh, what the concern is the Chinese uh, uh, satellite is not, I think it's not a very friendly satellite uh, which uh, provide the TV, uh, satellite TV waves or something like that. Uh, you know, the United States satellite and our satellite is very peaceful. Uh, our satellite never kills another satellite, but the Chinese satellite actually kills another satellite. What we call the killer satellite is exist in the outer space. So, um, and also the Chinese uh, space agency and uh, military forces, they launched their own satellite and then the next, they launched another satellite and another satellite shoot down the former satellite, which they launched. And um, when it explodes all over the outer space, lots of space debris, uh, uh, how to say, spread out uh, to the, uh, uh, the space, space field. So, those Chinese satellite, uh, the st space debris, uh, very quick, very speedy to, there is a possibility to hit another healthy satellite uh, from, from, for example, from NASA or from uh, JAXA or whoever, uh, you know, the country who launched the satellite in the space, uh, there is a possibility to get injured. So uh, we, the country of the uh, democratic country, especially, and also the we, the country uh, who is really interested in, and also we get the profit from the space, have to think how to uh, hedge the risk of the uh, space debris made by China. So, um, uh, we and the, actually, if we have to protect from uh, the missile from somewhere, we we can we cannot provide the solutions without GPS. Even the automotive uh, cars, you you have a you know car navigation system inside of your uh, the car. So, if satellite damaged. Uh, all the, uh, the waves provided from the outer space is going to stop. And uh, this uh, uh, effect affect to the, this will affect to the very big damage to the economy, uh, to the all over the world. So I would like to say that the Chinese uh, space agency or the PLA activity in the outer space have to be, uh, have to be safe activity and uh, Please behave. Uh, the 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 what you are what you are doing in outer space is uh, concerning our uh, you know all the space agency from the world. And now the Japanese uh, cell, uh, Ministry of Defense collaborating with uh, Japanese startups uh, from the universities from the private sectors uh, that the uh, uh, we have to collaborate. Uh, solve the those kind of issue uh, from the uh, outer space. So, which means uh, uh, we are collecting uh, some some seeds from the uh, the startups. Uh, they are now um, 
now are selling the system of the uh, how to how to collect those space debris, not from just the Chinese activities, but also the another you know the space debris to collect and the clean make make it clean in outer space, uh, which means healthy uh, space. So those kind of uh, uh, sectors uh, we have to create and uh, we have to pioneering uh, those kind of uh, uh, new tech uh, which based uh, which is going to be, become a base basic of the uh, outer space activities and and also uh, finally uh, you this is a very famous uh, uh, GPS uh, photo uh, so this is the uh, South China Sea you can see Philippines and uh, you know, ASEAN countries around, this is the South China Sea, but uh, there is a uh, lots of artificial island made by China uh, during the uh, uh, Obama administration. And uh, for example, this is uh, one of the biggest reef, biggest reef in 2014 in the South China Sea. But 2015, one year later, the Chinese destroy all the reef, all the environment, natural environment, they ignore the natural environment and turn into the, those kind of man-made islands. And this 2020, now they already made almost four kilometers runway for the military base. So those kind of uh, uh, destroying and ignore the natural resource, uh, of the earth and uh, creating the new base for the military base inside of the South China Sea. It's, it's not understandable for the all the Asian free and democratic country. This is a big, big threat, not just for us in Asian people, but also the concern of the, uh, even the American citizens or the European countries. So that's why all the European country and also the, of course, the United States, the armed forces now coming forward and together exercising in the Asia. Uh, so those kind of exercise, I think uh, it's, uh, we can show the deterrences, deterrence uh, towards the, uh, uh, the country who, who is not, uh, I mean, who is doing uh, what I told you, uh, those kind of uh, uh, very dangerous and uh, uh, activities. And so if you look the map, um, this is the United States, and this is my country, Japan, Pacific Ocean. And uh, now one more thing, we have a Honolulu here. You know, the 70 years ago, we attack Pearl Harbor, but now US and Japan is a very good allies, like, uh, you know, it's a, one of the best allies in the all over the world. And uh, we can uh, together uh, preparing for the, and the defense for the uh, lots of, if something enemies activities or the even evils uh, coming uh, attack uh, our nation or, uh, our citizens, we have to protect together. And, but uh, uh, if you look the, the news from Zvezda, which is a Russian report, uh, the news from the Russian military, they are actually exercising now just right in front of the Honolulu. And uh, there, there are battleships, nuclear submarines and uh, big airplanes, and they are really exercising just right in front of the Western part of Honolulu. And uh, so the, uh, I don't want to remind uh, the 70 years ago, but uh, we have to be careful uh, the exercising of the, uh, the Russians. Uh, they are taking the place, uh, the Western side of the Honolulu, I mean the Hawaii. And uh, how in Hawaii, uh, there is a seventh fleet uh, and also the, in the PECOM, 
uh, the headquarters in Hawaii. And uh, we now, uh, yesterday, uh, the White House, I mean, the, the United States government also made a uh, comment about uh, Hong Kong, the daily, uh, Apple daily uh, is closed. And uh, I'm so sorry for them uh, to, that uh, they cannot say no more free word, no more expression. Uh, the Hong Kong people cannot uh, loudly speak out. And uh, if somebody who live in Hong Kong, uh, the claim to the Beijing or Xi Jinping uh, easily to arrest or the kidnapped by the uh, somebody, I don't know, but it's already reported in the news even. So, uh, you know, the Hong Kong is, uh, you know, the chi China, uh, after the 1997, the Hong Kong back in uh, to China, uh, but unfortunately, uh, the Chinese government said uh, they are going to do uh, one state, two systems, but actually they, they broke the promise. And uh, so I really worried about Hong Kong on, or Wiggles, uh, you know, the human rights is a, one of the biggest issue, but uh, there is no freedom if I look at the, the news from the, uh, all over the world. So uh, I really uh, want to want that the United States and uh, uh, who agree uh, about the human uh, security or hu humanitarian aid or uh, human rights issue uh, have to be uh, think together and act together. And to, uh, we have to, Let's hear the voices from the suffering, uh, from those kind of uh, pressured, uh, from the uh, some kind of uh, the the country or government, what we call the autocrats or the autocratic government. Uh, so I, I'm I'm personally uh, thinking about and the focus uh, those issues, and. Uh, so what the, what, what, one more last thing uh, I, I have, a, uh, I, I'm watching carefully is a Taiwan issue. So I, uh, the Wall Street Journal uh, reported my opinion as uh, their opinions about um, uh, the, I told about the, uh, how to say, red line of the 21st century of the Asia is uh, Taiwan Strait. So, uh, we have to protect the Taiwan uh, as a democratic country. In 1970s, uh, the year we, we were born, at that time, uh, the, the U United States policy and also the uh, all over the world uh, think and uh, uh, tried the China it's going to be become one. So it says one China policy, as you know, it's a history, one of the page of the big, big history book. But the decision of at that time, and now since 1970s, and now it's a 50 years later, what happening and the results of the 50 years ago decision-making or the, the, the people or the person in power at that time, the decision makers, uh, was it right? Or, well, or it's uh, good? I don't know. The future kids generation, if they become adult, they are going to, I think, judge uh, the historical mo historical moment uh, about from the political point of view. So what is uh, what I'd like to say is, democratic country have to protect the democratic country and allies. And if you look at the cyberspace, cyber intelligence or the cyber security, um, I was attend. Uh, White House Cyber Security Conference. I was attend uh, European uh, Security Conference on cybers. 
And uh, when I attend the both meeting, I felt there is a new type of cold war already exists in the cyber field. Um, China, Russia, they want to control everything on cybers, even the, the citizens living in their countries. And the United States or Japan or the allies of the democratic countries using the internet field as a freedom field. And also uh, the internet is the, uh, the trigger and also the, the spring to, to increasing the economy or each own country GDPs. So I think um, uh, those kind of, uh, uh, how do you say, the, the teams uh, difference between the autocrats, autocratic governments, country team or a friendship group, and also the US, Japan, or the European Union, the freedom and democrat, democratic groups is already, uh, there is a, some kind of the, uh, the bail, I mean, the, uh, some kind of the wall uh, that you cannot see, but you can feel it, that, that there is a really divided uh, societies uh, is in a cyber field. So, uh, it takes a little bit long to talk about my uh, uh, few of the my personal opinion and uh, sharing with uh, a very great think tank, uh, number one think tank in the world called Harrison Institute. And uh, I really respect you and I respect the think tank. And also uh, um, the United States is our allies and uh, our ancestors uh, fought against each other. But because of that, uh, we lost the lives. Uh, we, we had uh, lots of tears from our ancestors and the friends and the families. But because of that, now the 21st century, Japan and the United States is the most strong allies and the trust friends. Uh, any other uh, cannot uh, compete or compare. So again, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, uh, sorry to, uh, I'm sorry to the audience uh, hearing my uh, pity English, <laughs> but uh, I, I personally doing my best effort uh, because I love Hudson Institute. So thank you very much again and uh, uh, arigato. Well, thank you so much, State uh, Minister Nakayama, for those uh, incredible remarks. Uh, very rich, a lot to dig uh, into. Uh, you began by talking about uh, the threat, uh, not simply being a threat that Japan faces, uh, not simply that the United States faces, but that uh, we face together with our European allies. You started by talking about the threat from the new, the newly developed uh, Chinese uh, submarine launched uh, nuclear uh, missiles, the JL-3s, uh, and you, uh, you walked us through a very rich discussion, uh, cross-domain discussion ranging from uh, uh, the threat in outer space to the challenge uh, uh, in the uh, artificial islands in the South China Sea uh, to uh, the human rights threat posed in Hong Kong and in Xinjiang uh, and also the threat to the people of Taiwan and uh, the threat posed in the cyber domain. And it, it's, it was a very rich uh, presentation, lots of questions to ask you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, those, those uh, very uh, thought provoking remarks and also for the kind remarks about Hudson Institute. Uh, let, me, let me begin uh, uh, by picking up on the Taiwan theme that you raised towards the end. Uh, you and Defense Minister Kishi are among Taiwan's best friends in the Japanese diet, uh, but as warm as the relationship is between the Japanese and Taiwanese people, and as crucial as the defense of Taiwan is to the defense of Japan, the official relationship has very significant legal limitations. Uh, you hinted in your in your in your in your um, remarks about the the fact that it's our, our children will look back at the decisions made in the 1970s about uh, uh, the one China policy and, and ask if it's 
if it was wise or not. Uh, and um, I'm wondering how you see the, do you see an evolution in Japanese-Taiwan relations occurring? Uh, how long will it take? How long over time will it take? And, and how do the Japanese people uh, sense the security threat of Taiwan is linked to their own security threat? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Japan and Taiwan, it's a really close uh, border. I mean, the, you told uh, Kishi Nobuo, who is the defense minister of us, our, my boss, Kishi san and uh, I, uh, I'm kind of a friend of Taiwan, but we are not a friend of Taiwan. We are brother, we are family of Taiwan, more closer. So if something happened in Taiwan, it's directly uh, relate to the Okinawa prefecture. And in Okinawa prefecture, there is existence of the United States, the armed forces. We have a Cardinal Air Base. Uh, we have a, a FTEM, uh, the US Marine Corps base and uh, another facilities, not just the uh, Japanese self-defense forces and uh, Japanese citizens living in Okinawa, but also the, the United States military bases and uh, facilities, and also the families of the U.S. Uh, the uh, the people who are serving uh, in the Okinawa for the entire whole world. So uh, we have to really uh, focusing on the Taiwan uh, issue, uh, which now they have a, a threatening by the Chinese BLA. And the last week, twenty eight fighter jets. Uh, flew over from the Chinese uh, continent towards Taiwan. And they actually cross, uh, sometimes cross borders of the uh, Chinese air, territorial air and uh, uh, land and soil. So, and also if uh, it's too small in this map, but uh, if here is a Taiwan and this is the Pacific Ocean, this is uh, uh, the Western side, which is the Chinese content. The Chinese fighter jet, PLA fighter jet, coming from the, the content, continent of the China, and, uh, and also the battleship uh, used to be exercising around this uh, China-Taiwan strait. But now they move the Pacific Ocean side even, and they're exercising in the Eastern part of the Taiwan. So this means they are trying to surround all the Taiwan islands, <clears throat> which is a very, uh, if I'm a Taiwanese uh, who living in Taiwan, uh, maybe feel the lots of threat and the stress from the exercise, even the exercising uh, from the Chinese PLA activities. And, uh, but also on the other hand, uh, in 1970s, one China policy already made by the uh, uh, senior members of the politics in both country, actually, and uh, including the uh, Chinese Beijing government. So how to solve this issue? Uh, the one thing that we can do is uh, we have to show the deterrence towards China and not just China, but also the Russians uh, because uh, they, as I told you, that uh, they are doing their, their exercises together. So uh, from, I think from the Taiwan point of view, this is my personal opinion, but I think the, the Taiwanese are really uh, concerned and also the focusing on the two big countries collaborating and uh, gave the lot of, gave the lots of threat uh, towards Taiwan. So what we can do is uh, show the deterrence and also the, so something uh, attack or the happening towards Taiwan, it's uh, straight to relate to the, not just Japan, but also the US-Japan alliance even. So um, uh, please the, think about the geopolitically, how it is really close, uh, Taiwan Island and the Okinawa Island. It, it's kind of like, a, a, nose and eyes, this close. So uh, please be careful. And uh, I, I really want the United States have to be more strong, stronger and stronger. 
and um, uh, you know, in in early days, maybe 15 years ago, uh, Chinese PLA, uh, if something happens between the United States, the armed forces, I think the U.S. forces uh, can easily, you know, uh, cover their powers. But right now, China, Chinese PLA has a uh, the big, uh, uh, how to say, aircraft carrier, and that they are creating their own new battleships. They have, of course, the nuclear capabilities and, and a very strong leadership by Mr. Xi Jinping. So, and they have aggress, aggressive, uh, how to say, the, the, the thought and the will. So the, the perceived power of their country is uh, getting stronger. So uh, wake up, uh, we have to wake up and um, we have to prepare the, the strange activity uh, around the Taiwan. Well, yeah, thank you. And let, let me ask you, as you, you, talk, you, you talked in your remarks uh, several times about the need to deter China. And I think there's a sense now in Japan that uh, national security needs to move from defense to deterrence that this is increasingly important for Japan. And their public discussion of Japan's future defense policy though tends to focus more on inputs than on outputs and outcomes. And so there's a lot of focus on the 1% of GDP number. That's certainly important, but what kinds of concrete capabilities are you and um, Minister Kishi uh, uh, putting in place? Uh, what, what does Japan need to field and de deploy to, to support its it's new tougher line on foreign policy as you move from defense to deterrence. Yes, um, as I told you, uh, the classic type of warfare, uh, we only have to protect uh, you know, the land, air and sea. Only three uh, domains, I mean the, the, the warfare. But the, right now we have to think adding the another warfare and the war fields called space and cyber and also electric uh, electric in, in Japanese called the denshisen electric warfare. Yeah. So we have a lot of warfare and the domains more than six and plus fake news and uh, internet cyber intelligence and counterintelligence and also not just the big country but on the other hand there is a, some organization called Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, even the Japan Red Army or lots of you know classic type of the terrorist or the new type of the terrorist terrorism is uh, existing in this uh, this world right now. So we have to prepare when we think and uh, we have to prepare for the uh, all, all, all of the, those kind of uh, activities, uh, we have to uh, try to increase uh, the budget uh, for the defense and also the intelligence and the interior issue even. And uh, right now the ruling party called Liberal Democratic Party, uh, they requested uh, us to the Japanese government uh, please try to increase the budget of defense they are requesting. Actually, our budget is um, the 50% of our budget for the defense is the salary uh, of the, uh, the, the, the self-defense force staffs. So only 50% of the whole budget of defense is the, we can buy some missile, we can buy some tanks, we have to R&D the next techniques uh, or spin off and collaborate with, with uh, private sectors or academia. So our budget are really limited. So, uh, so, that, so that point of view, uh, we have to creating together and uh, try to make it cost more lower and also the sharing the, uh, our capabilities and uh, uh, how to say, uh, wor working out uh, the, the, the path, uh, how to protect. 
So, and also uh, we are also trying to uh, think about uh, uh, standoff capability uh, about the, the missiles and also the defensive uh, whole sky from the uh, enemy uh, threat uh, from the uh, Baya sky. And also we have to think about the uh, GPS technology uh, for the future together, uh, like uh, the satellite constellation uh, in the uh, entire uh, the earth, it's the, we, which is uh, we have to protect from the HGV, the high, you know, high speed, uh, the new missiles, cruising uh, type of missiles. And also the, it's like a pitching of the Japanese pitcher in the US uh, baseball field. Sometimes they throw a very big, very good ball, and it, but it's going to be curved suddenly. <laughs> so those kind of a new type of missile, uh, which we cannot so easily protect or the detect. So we have to creating the, uh, you know, the enemy creating the new tech. So we have to creating new defense tech, uh, but cost efficiency is also needed. And uh, we have to try to uh, make them understand from the voters, from the uh, tax payers, uh, the way of thinking and uh, their concept and uh, the opinions. It's very, very important. So we, the politicians and the government have to approach to the people of, uh, of own citizens uh, to make them understand uh, what's happening in, in the world. And uh, we have to hedge the risk of the world. I really surprised uh, also on the trip to the by the uh, DOS invited as an international visitor program, I visited the Honolulu, the final destination. And uh, I thought that was lucky, but only the business. So I went to the, the, uh, the United States um, Army facility in Honolulu, Waikiki. There is um, uh, Asia Pacific Security Studies, the think tank uh, runs by uh, US Army. And uh, they, actually um, inviting uh, 41 countries at that time, including Chile, uh, which countries surround the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, the United States government invite the, all the future uh, golden eggs from the 41 countries, diplomats, uh, military officials, and uh, all the young people get together in Honolulu. And, uh, whole week and the weekend uh, spend time together in a three months in Honolulu. So I, I learned the United States government at that time, uh, Indian officials and also the Pakistan officials both invited in Honolulu at that time. And uh, <clears throat> first time Pakistan, India, uh, it's not so good relations between the two. And the one Indian official dropped the pen the Pakistan never took it, I mean, for him. <laughs> but uh, three months, you know, we have a weekend, they can do canoeing, surfing, barbecues, get together, talk together, uh, the showing our own, the way of thinking together. And sometimes maybe arguing and the fight uh, with the conversation. But you remember when the India and also the Pakistan, uh, the conflict happening in uh, uh, over there, the the both eggs becoming generals in in the India and the Pakistan at that time. So they called each other, making hotlines together and prevent the war. So who make this peace? The United States and also the US, US Army, the think tank called the Asia Pacific Security Studies. So I asked the head of the, the think tank at that time, what are you focusing on? And he, he said, we are aiming how to hedge the risk of the war is the answer from the Asia Pacific Security Studies. And uh, I personally really, uh, how to say, uh, attract my uh, philosophy. 
And uh, I think uh, we, again, approach those, that kind of the approach to the world, uh, to how to hit the risk of the world, because we already experienced one, two years of the pandemic, and uh, people had a uh, lot of stress. The economy is a lot of dead. And uh, now the it's, uh, environment is a uh, worst situation right now. So the somebody who is kind of like a evil or a terrorist or the some bad, a bad how do you say, uh, evil, try to you know attack or to make something profitable for them. Uh, we can feel it, but uh, we have to. Pre, uh, we have to, how do you say, uh, prepare for that kind of uh, worst situation or scenarios. So, so that's what I need uh, for that. And uh, actually, uh, back to your question, and uh, my answer is uh, that, that we have to increasing the budget to how to hit the risk and uh, not attacking the enemy, but we have to uh, protect our own, uh, our own, uh, how to say, citizens and the profit, and uh, our own property, and the soils, our land, homeland, so and the free world, democratic world. So uh, long answer, but uh, and also my uh, sorry again, but my English skill is not so good. But if I'm speaking Japanese, maybe I can say more good and the better opinion, but. Uh, I hope that uh, Ken, you you will catch my wave. I mean, catch my message. <laughs> you're speaking, uh, State Minister Nakayama, you're speaking very clearly. We get your message. You're speaking uh, beautifully. <laughs> yes, arigato. Thank you very much. You, look, in the first defense budget, the Biden administration prioritized new technologies such as hypersonics, which we referred to earlier, missiles and defenses, cyber operations, directed energy, low Earth orbit satellites, AI enabled combat systems, autonomous vehicles. Some of which you mentioned Japan is working on, and Japan is drawing on its uh, its, um, its startup sector in some cases, particularly in the satellite area. But there, given these next generation technologies, I think there's some fear in the United States that our allies, including Japan, are going to fall behind the U.S. military in these new capabilities, and it's going to be challenging to maintain interoperability uh, if we're increasingly employing very different technologies and operational concepts. You know, can the JMOD maintain interoperability? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, we are focusing and we are really interested in, uh, how do you say, the doing and the study and the prepare, prepare for the interoperability between the our allies, United States, the armed forces, between Japanese self-defense forces. And actually we are buying a lot of uh, fighter jet from the United States, uh, lots of techniques uh, from the United States, and uh, even the uh, it, it's high price or not, but uh, we we have to buy uh, those kind of uh, uh, techniques and the, the the fighter jet or whatever we need to protect our lives uh, from the enemies. So, and also the you know, uh, the allies, alliance between the US and Japan and the alliance between the humans who works inside of the militaries and self-defense forces, they, uh, their capability is not one day you can make it. It's not instant. We doing lots of work every single day. And uh, actually the, right now inside of the Japanese soil, US, Japan exercising together in uh, somewhere in this country. And actually next week, I'm going to Hokkaido to watch uh, their exercise, uh, Japan, US together in, in Hokkaido. So those kind, every single day, collaboration between the United States and uh, on behalf of the Japanese staff in, in uh, MOD, I think, uh, Interoperability is not the machine or machinery uh, or mechanics. It's a human being. Uh, so we, the human, 
and the United States soldiers and the Japanese self-defense forces staff, they more synchronized together. So, and the, we, it's, we know the cost efficiency is a mutual profit. So uh, we, we have to protect on our companies, private companies who are creating the arms or the armament and the United States also have same issue. So we, they need to be protected uh, by the economy point of view too. So we have to more strongly collaborate and uh, we share the profit. And also uh, we have to focusing on the future, how we are going to manage and the marketing, even the private sector's people uh, can get uh, very good uh, circles together to grow the, the protection uh, from the enemies and uh, keep the lives together. And also the, the share of the market uh, from the point of view of the economic private sector's uh, views. So, uh, and then we can more, more invest to the future tech. Uh, for example, actually the China and Russia doing very good. Uh, they are friends. They are very good friends, I think. They, but on the other hand, they are creating their own missiles capability, their own submarine capabilities. They are sharing their knowledge together, even with academia, I guess, or R&D center PhDs. And uh, actually few of the PhDs uh, in China, uh, they study abroad in the United States, like a special university, MIT, Harvard, uh, Caltech, Stanford, those very good universities actually uh, educated them, uh, a few of them, I think. So you, uh, the United States uh, knows what, what the university taught them. So they are very skillful and they are very genius people. So we have to uh, more, more focusing on how to protect and not just protect, but how to hedge the risk. So I think the interoperability is not just the techniques, but the first we need a trust between the humans and it learn from the human being. And we are going to have some needs and the needs, the target and the purpose is the machine and the mechanics and the techniques. Uh, collaborating together. And we, we are going to think about the basically the geopolitics. So the geopolitics point of view, now United States, a very big, huge country, and uh, we are facing uh, each other, but there is a big, big uh, ocean called the Pacific Ocean, but the 50%, the Western part of the Pacific Ocean, which is Honolulu here, the US here, Japan here, Honolulu to Japan. This zone is becoming the Chinese and the Russians come in this zone. So the United States, uh, the protection line is going to be backwards a little bit. So I think uh, how to protect those kinds of the geopolitically uh, concerned area, uh, we have to use interoperability uh, philosophy uh, together, Japan and the US together, and even the Taiwan, they are making a very good machine and uh, they have a capability to manufacture it. So uh, we, uh, maybe our private sector also uh, should orders, order more, um, uh, lots of uh, uh, businesses, uh, you know, meeting together uh, with the Tai, including Taiwan not just uh, Japan and the United States. And uh, so I think uh, it will, uh, how to make the friendship league, friendship team of the democratic country uh, will solve the problem. So not think, don't think just as one. We have to think uh, we are not one. We have our friends and uh, we share the profit. Yes, 
that is uh, my uh, thought. Excellent. That was that's a, a great answer and very inspiring. I've got one last question because we're just a, we're actually over time, but your remarks have been so fascinating. We've seen both the uh, Biden administrations and the Abe and Suga governments reaffirm publicly the importance of the American nuclear umbrella uh, for the alliance. That being said, today in the U.S., there is a debate about procuring a nuclear armed submarine launched cruise missile. You spoke earlier about the threat posed by China's new uh, JL-3 uh, nuclear uh, missiles. And as of today, the U.S. Navy is skeptical about funding a, a nuclear armed submarine launched cruise missile, but many on Capitol Hill support it as uh, necessary to enhance the American extended deterrent. Uh, as without it, there's a possibility that China, Russia, and North Korea could endanger Japan, South Korea, Taiwan with nuclear armed missiles. But as of now, the Biden administration, at least rhetorically, has adopted the posture that the U.S. shouldn't use nuclear weapons if the U.S. itself is not attacked. Without engaging you in uh, American domestic politics, how do you view this issue in Japan? Yes. Um... Uh, it, I think it's a very difficult question to answer it. Um, you know, we have to learn from the history. Uh, <clears throat> from, you know, it, 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 I'm married. I have my wife in my constituency. I live in the same uh, roof, under the roof, and we love each other. But before I get married, uh, I thought justice inside of my house is one. But after I get married, it wasn't justice. There is a two justices inside of my house under the roof. One justice, husband justice. The other justice, wife's justice. So I learned from the uh, marriage uh, how to understand my lovely wife's opinion, lovely wife's uh, justice. And uh, I want my wife to understand my justice. So I try to not fight against my wife, but uh, on the other hand, my wife, I want my wife to understand honest and clearly my opinion. And uh, so, this is the, the balance of the, uh, the house rule inside of my family. And uh, if you look at uh, the Japan or US and China or Russia, I think it's kind of like a strategically same. We have our justice. They have their own justice. Just the way of thinking is different. And uh, how to manage inside of the, the whole world, uh, the big, big top, top of the roof, and that we live under the roof together. And uh, we don't get, we don't want more fight against each other like uh, uh, 70s or 70s years ago, uh, because uh, we attack uh, Pearl Harbor and uh, uh, Pearl Harbor memories is still remembering for the uh, US uh, citizens and uh, learn from the history. If you go to the Israel, uh, you learn Holocaust and uh, Holocaust Museum exists in all over the world. We learn uh, history. And uh, in Japan, uh, we attack the Pearl Harbor, but uh, the end of the war, the US uh, dropped two bombs uh, nuclear bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and uh, we lost lots of lives. And uh, we uh, were born in 1970, so we don't uh, experience that tragedy, uh, even Pearl Harbor, even Hiroshima or Nagasaki. But what we have to do is we learn from the history, and uh, we have to hit the risk of the war, what the United States, uh, the Army think tank says. And uh, this is a very important. So uh, how to use or how to react uh, using the power of the nuclear weapons capability? Uh, before that, we have to 
think uh, how to manage the the the, the counterpart uh, of the another world. Uh, their justice is where and the which and the what their needs. So the we when we use options of the military capability, before that we have to do the diplomat foreign policy diplomatic relations is more needed and uh, otherwise if now the capability of the nuclear weapons is much much more stronger compared to hiroshima or nagasaki if uh, some country uh, shoot the torpedo from their continent towards honolulu that missiles torpedoes uh, the warheads is compared to Hiroshima, it's 200 times more than Hiroshima. So I been to Hiroshima before and I went to the museum before. From that experience and the perspective, if 200 times more strong atomic bombs or torpedoes or missiles, warheads towards Honolulu, I think Honolulu will be erased from the, from the map. So we have to, we have to think before using those powers, we have to think how to stop it. Uh, so uh, I think the, the, we have to discuss about uh, uh, this issue is a very important, of course. And uh, I have my opinion uh, about uh, the, the nuclear umbrella issue, of course, but before that discussion, I want to discuss more peacefully way to provide and uh, protect how, how, how we how we you know manage the the big roof and inside of the our house. The, so, so that's why I told you a story. Uh, we cannot get divorced. Lots of people divorced, but we cannot actually. Uh, when you think about the map of the geopolitics of the world and the world economy or the internet, especially, there is no border. Uh, so once you affect maybe in South Africa uh, or the North Pole even uh, can get effect from somewhere in uh, downtown of LA or the New York or, so we connected already in 21st century. So. Mm, your problem is my problem. Your profit is my profit. So those kind of the way of thinking will need it. And uh, we, the Japan and the Japanese people, uh, try to uh, how to say erase all the all the uh, nuclear uh, you know the arms from the world, I guess. Uh, and the, but there is um, two types of the way of thinking. The nuclear weapons uh, afforded by the democratic country or the freedom country, nuclear weapons affording by the communist country or the some dictatorship country. Um, you can see it's the same arm, same technology, same risk, but who is going to control these arms is very important. So that's why we are tackling on the issue about the North Korea. Uh, I was really surprised, but I was really, uh, uh, that was a very, one of the big, one of the big uh, challenge uh, when the Donald Trump visited uh, Kim Jong-un directly and the bilaterally uh, straight, straight speak, uh, uh, you know, between the North Korea and the um, United States pre as a president. And uh, I thought he moved uh, the Kim Jong-un. Uh, but uh, unfortunately now, uh, even the US offer uh, to the North Korea, about the North Korea respond is not so uh, uh, good mood. But uh, I think never give up. Uh, we, the country, the United States and Japan, the democratic country have to approach uh, peacefully uh, together towards uh, even the North Korea. Uh, we have a missile situation, we have a nuclear weapon situation, and we have a 
uh, you know, the adaptive issues. And uh, so we have a concern together. And so that's why we have to approach together. And uh, finally, uh, I'd like to say, um, so the, so the how, to, uh, how to make a discussion about the, uh, those kind of the nuclear umbrellas is uh, if we talk about this, I think the counterpart of the another world we're going to talk the same way. So we have to show, and we have to, you know, the coronavirus divided all everybody in the world that vaccine and then get together immediately and talk in person, face to face, and the, no more hiding the secrets. But the, the, the threat is mutual threat for the both sides. So we never again, uh, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, another Hiroshima and Nagasaki to the world. So I won't uh, stop the, those kind of uh, uh, tragedy in the future. So that is my uh, opinion. So thank you very much. Thank, well, thank you very much on that, those, those incredibly articulate words. I just want to uh, thank you, uh, State Minister Nakayama, for uh, gracing us. You're one of the rising stars in uh, security circles in Japan and all of us at Hudson Institute can see why we're proud to consider you part of the Hudson Institute family and look forward to welcoming <laughs> you to Washington uh, when travel begins again. And uh, thank you so much uh, for your insights. No, thank you very much, Ken.